whatever, whatever Jose was talking about uh, is valid for two data planes. There are two data planes for off the segment routing. One is the MPLS and second is IPv6. MPLS is much easier because for the data plane with the, the, the MPLS, we do the same thing like we did last 20 years. We do always the push, pop labels, so maybe there is a difficulty because we need to push more than one label, more than two labels, but that's only difference. In terms of the forwarding, in terms of any, any other router, everything is basically, basically identical. With IPv6, it's gonna be significantly different. All the forwarding is the different, and I will try to explain how the forwarding uh, is done and why why it is, why it is, uh, what is, what is different to, to MPLS. <clears throat> the segment routing v6 will really cover everything, the, what, what SR MPLS is doing, but a little bit later, because the data plane is really a little bit more difficult. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, what, what Cisco is doing with the segment routing is we are trying to standardize everything. So Jose showed you all the drafts and all the RFCs which are covering SR and PLS. And here are the most important drafts which are covering, covering SRV6. So we will start with SR, SRH, segment routing header, and this explains really how the forwarding, forwarding is done. Then there is a, well, I would say main, main draft which is uh, network programmability draft, which describes all the functions which are related to networking. And there we will cover IGP, 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 and BGP, BGP extensions to, to SRV6. So we will start with <clears throat> SRH. We said that the, this is still same segment routing, so we need to encode the segments, not in MPLS, but in something else. And it's something else, it's gonna be IPv6 address. Well, it's not really IPv6 address, it's something slightly different, but it has a format of IPv6 address. And all the packets in the SRV6 network will be IPv6 packets, so there is no MPLS header. There is nothing else, everything is just IPv6. <clears throat> In IPv6 header, well, if I will really simplify that, there is just one important field, and that's destination, destination IP address. Second most important field is actually next header. So next header is just pointing to the whatever is beyond the, the IPv6 header. So protocol, TCP, UDP, but that can point also that the next protocol can be also IPv4, can be IPv6, and can be layer two, layer two as well. So you can encapsulate into the IPv6, IPv4, you can encapsulate layer two, you can even encapsulate another IPv, IPv6. One of the next headers, which is, which is important, important for us, is uh, next header type 43. And this is what is called routing header. Routing header is defined in IPv6 since very beginning of IPv6. It's still part of RFC 2460, so it was there in the beginning and it was really intent to have those extension headers inside, inside IPv6. And <clears throat> there were different, different types of extension headers or of routing header defined in the beginning. Some of them, some of them are already depreciated, some of them are still active and still, still used. Still really important is the mobility. So some source routing was depreciated really, really early in the, in, in the beginning, like more than 10 years, 10 years ago. What segment routing is doing, it's trying to define new extension routing header, type four, which is really segment routing header, SRH. And that SRH is actually encoding all the all the segments, all the segments into that extension headers. So it's not like in MPLS, it is different. In MPLS, you are always having all the segments on the top of the packets, just behind, behind the layer two header, and you are just stripping one after another as you, as you go through, through the segment list. Here, you are putting segment list into the extension header, and <clears throat> you are putting them into the particular order, and you are not stripping them at all. You are keeping them all the way between source and the destination, or almost to the destination. It's, it's up to you. There is one more thing which is, which is defined for the extension header, and that's optional part, which is anything TLV. So the most typical thing for the TLV is security things, HMAC. 
some some hash of the packet to increase increase the security. This is not possible anywhere in MPLS. So this is optional and it's not used for the hardware forwarding. But here everything is put into the list of the segment. So it's a little bit more difficult for the hardware to do all the forwarding because suddenly you are not doing the MPLS push and pop. You need to create this extension header and you need to read pieces of this extension header and do forwarding based on those, those fields in extension headers. But, well, it's not going to be that complex. Is that a challenge with the commodity hardware as far as Absolutely. It's the challenge hardware to support that in the header? Absolutely, it's a challenge for any hardware. It's a challenge even for, for the custom silicon, it's a challenge for, for the merchant silicon. Our first, impl well, our first hardware implementation right now is on two platforms. One is the custom silicon, well, second is the merchant silicon. Mm -hmm. uh, the both are shipping right now in 6.1 6 release. Uh, obviously, capability-wise, they are slightly different. The custom silicon is slightly better than the, than the merchant. Gotcha. But both are both are possible, and both both are both are ship, ship, shipping right now. So, <clears throat> in a SRH, there are several important several important fields. The I said there is a list of the segment. Last segment is always put in the first place. So there is header of SRH. The, this is just eight bytes, and there is always sixteen bytes of the the, the segment of the individual segments. As more, more segments you need to put into the header, the, the header gets, gets longer. The last segment, so very destination of your segment routing, segment routing path or policy, is put in the, as the first, first segment. And the first segment is really at the end, end of the list, so at the end of the SRH. And there is a pointer in a header which always points to the first segment. That First segment is always always there, and there is always pointer which actually shows you where the end of SRH is, when the, where, where there is an end of the list. What is the second very important field is here segments left. It's another pointer, and the name is kind of misleading to me. For me, it should be named rather the active segment. It's pointing to the active segment, and that active segment is used right now for the forwarding of the packet. But obviously not all the hardware would be able to really take a look, okay, there is a different destination. So what we always do, we copy the active segment into the destination address. There is always the active segment is in a destination address, and any router will do the forwarding based on the destination address. So even the router, which is not SRV6 aware, can do forwarding of all, all the SRV6 packets. So you can run it well over internet, over the commodity hardware, with just doing IPv6 routing, with plain, plain IPv6 routing. Okay? So <clears throat> I will show how the SR H processing is done and how the forwarding is done. So here is the simple network and there are like four routers, A, B, C, D. And in between routers, between those two routers, which are like end of individual segments, there can be any IPv6 router. Anything can be in there. There can be any routing, routing, which just deliver the packet from A to B. So router A wants to send the packet because this is very ingress of the of the segment routing domain. He wants to send the packet towards the D, but he wants to make sure packet goes through B and C. So he needs to create the list of the segments and he will do that. So he will put very destination of the packets uh, as a, as a f first, first item in the segment list, which is D, then C, and the first segment is B. B, because it's first segment, the pointer first segment points to B, because it's at position two, and the active segment right now is B as well, because this is, this is the first segment, I wanna really send it firstly to B. The active segment, or segment's left pointer, points to B as well. And because active, active segment pointer points to B, the B is put into the destination, destination IPv6 address. As simple as that. And router will take the packet 
create the packet because he's in based on the policy, based on a flex algo, based on the configuration, whatever you can imagine. Uh, he will create that packet and send it out according to this routing table. As simple as that, and B goes on this interface through a couple of different routers. Well, and those routers, they are not SRV6 aware by general. I was actually going to ask that question, so you can pass through a point that's not SR aware, Absolutely. and the header that you just showed will pass through. Absolutely. This router, I don't know how to name him, but mm -hmm. uh, this router will just do the routing. Because he is not the destination address, he will just take, do the uh, lookup B colon colon and send it according to his forwarding table towards, towards the router B, towards the shortest path towards the router B. So in, in theory, even does that mean if I had two routers uh, across each other on the internet, I could pass that across an IPv6? That was my first trial. So, you know, first trial, I just built two virtual routers over the internet and did the layer two VPN for them and just put one router here, one router in different country, and I created layer two VPN through the internet over IPv6. Wow, that's as pretty cool. As simple as that. Very cool. Okay, there was like, okay, let's give it a try. I used the FDIO. FDIO has all the SRV6 capability, and that was like easy to do, and it was like a few minutes. Just easy, easy to build layer to VPN over the internet. But Middle boxes don't them. choke on that SR header? No, they, they are not supposed to. Only the box which has the destination address B colon colon is supposed to do that because he know what is that function. Well, the some packet. middle boxes are really fussy about what they see in headers is my point. Well, it can be, well, if there is a firewall and the, the firewall can have set, set, set the rules, okay, don't pass any SRH, because there, if there is an IP routing exclusion header, don't pass it. But in general, it works over the internet. If there are just router, if there is no right, really security device, they are supposed to transport all those packets. And they don't, well, if you're a router, you're not in general, you're not looking what, whatever is inside the packet unless there is some reason. Right now, well, there is no reason, you forward it. And just obviously there were concerns, okay, is there some security on the internet? There isn't. This is just routing, so you can really build that. You can do the layer 2 VPN, layer 3 VPN over, over the internet. Kind of reminds me of SSH tunneling, being able to bypass intermediate hops now. Sure, sure. And this is for all the, all the intermediate hops. It's really just IPv6 routing with all the properties of IPv6 routing, and they are not supposed to do any look into the SRH at all. So, <clears throat> at the end... It, is, is there any risk there to, if I set my destination address to a device within a service provider's network that is running SRV6, yes. so that it then says, oh, it's addressed to me, I should open this, and I'll pull the next destination out? Absolutely. There, 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 there are part of the next draft I will cover, there are several security security rules you have to follow. And same, same like today, you won't allow anyone from outside, if you're a service provider, you won't allow anyone from outside, you won't allow your customer to send labeled traffic to your particular routers, it's going to be the same. It's going to be your closed environment with all the functions you have very well defined. And for the like security for interoperability between different service providers, there is a concept of the binding SID, which can be really secured. So I will allow this particular service provider or this particular customer use this binding SID, and behind this binding SID, there is a particular policy and particular service I, I will provide to this, to this provider. So uh, eventually, after after all the routing is done in between the, the between the routers, packet will reach the router B, and B has the function, and this is this is SRV6. He's he's SRV6 ever because there is there is a function B colon colon, and once it's received on that function, he will do just a few simple things. So he will decrement segments left. So because it's I'm gonna do the next segment. So I'm end of this particular first segment. So I'm end of the segment. I will decrement segments left. Once I decrement the segment left, then my new active segment <coughs> is big, become C. So I will take the C here, I will copy those 128 bits, I will copy them into the destination address. I will do the same thing. Well, suddenly the destination address is C colon colon. So I'll take the packet and will send it along the shortest path towards the C. And between B and C, there can be any, any, any number of routers I can imagine. Oh, there can easily be even A, there can easily be even D. They don't care. They will do just IPv6 forwarding towards, towards the C. Once the packet will reach router C, he will do exactly the same thing. He will decrement segment, segments left. 
segments left starts pointing to the to the first uh, last segment, which is D colon colon. We'll copy uh, destinate the, the D colon colon into the destination address and send it send it accordingly. And that's it. At the end, the packet will reach router D colon colon. And that's it. That's all the forwarding. It's slightly different. Uh, this um, kind of hard for the, the, the silicon because it's different. It's a different concept than we did in the past, but it has a lot of advantages. There is a lot of functions. There is a lot of things which can be involved there. There can be software which is building the SRH. And the, one of the implementations was on a Linux. One of the first implementation was the VPP, then Linux, and then we started with the, with the, with the merchant and the, and, the, and the custom silicons. So this is this is basic concept of SRV6. What is what is the next draft, which is which is really important and is really crucial for all the networking is network programmability, and it defines what the segment is and what are the function. Well, the segment SIT looks like an IPv6 address, but it is not. It doesn't have any property of IPv6 address. Well, if you have an IPv6 address, typically behind the IPv6 address, there is an IP stack. So you can telnet to that, you can SSH to that, you can do HTTP, either port is open or not. Here, it is not the case. It is not an IPv6 address. It just looks like an IPv6 address, but treat it like just another 128 bits. And it has several meanings. So it has several parts. The first part is what we call locator. Locator is the, the part which is used for the forwarding. So here it's like slash 64 but it can be anything. So locator is known part and according to this locator we can forward and we will get the packet to the device which is responsible for the function. Okay, and function can be anything. Right now, well, we shown what, what we call end function. This is the most basic function which is used for the forwarding. But the function can be really anything. Function can be video stream. Function can be storage. Function can be anywhere in the software. It can be application. It can be firewall. It can be really anything. And this is just locally defined. That device which owns the locator and maybe advertising the locator to the other devices is holding the function and that device knows what the function is supposed to do. And just to make it even more fancy, we put into the function arguments. So it's, it's like the pro in programming language. There is a function and there is a set of the arguments. And here, okay, I'm showing like 64-bit boundaries, 32-bit boundaries for function, and 32-bit 32 32 for, for the arguments. But you can do anything, anything you like. You can put like uh, the locator 32-bits, 32, 32 function can be another 32-bits, and the, 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 the arguments of the function can be, can be rest, rest of the packet. It's really up to network admin to define what is the function and how the locator is done. A locator is obviously the part which is used to get to the device. So if I'm the router and I'm having locator, I need to advertise that locator to everyone just to get all the packets to, to myself. And really, uh, the, the argument, well, I just gave an example with the storage. So the function can be access to the storage and the argument can be location on that storage, can be particle cluster of the storage, particle place of the storage, can be video stream, and the argument can be time where the video stream can, is supposed to start, or it can, be, it can be the encoding of the stream, or there can be two arguments, one is the encoding, and second, second is the starting point of the particle stream. So it's really open, and I'm 100% sure there will be more and more application of those which will be coming coming later. This feels like Lisp. Did you guys do you steal those guys to work mm. on this? No, it's not. I'm not saying no. it is. It just feels like it. Well, uh, <laughs> okay, I might be. I get that it's not. not. It I'm is just not. saying it looks kind of like. It. I think it's it's. Well, this is steel is a steel is a tough word. This is not covering any <laughs> signal. Word. Right now, we are just doing the forwarding, and the function is really abstraction of anything. We are not talking about any any control plane so far. There is yeah. nothing. Well, we know there is an IGP, there is a BGP, there might be, might be some controller which provides all this yeah. information. But this is not, which is, which is obviously part of the list. Please, right, different right. is showing 
all the, the locators and everything is there. Well, I wouldn't, no. Let's, let's face it, you know, all the things in the networking, they are coming back and forth, they are all the similars. Sure. But it's not the Lisp in this case. Okay, uh, so I said that, the, that, that there are no boundaries. You can really define whatever, whatever you want. It has to be routable. You need to make sure that the, based on the locator, the packet will get to the device, which is owner of the function. And <clears throat> this is actually, okay. I will skip those simple functions which are related to networking. I, will, I wanted to show basically this. This basically turns your network into the computer, into a huge computer where there are the, the, the different functions located anywhere in your network and your packet goes through all those functions. And the, each function will do his particular, his particular job. <coughs> and all the, all the things are done and it's really easy, easy set. So there is always locator, which tells you where the function is. And then there is a function, which has its own definition. It's doing whatever, whatever it's supposed to do. And it can be anywhere. And there is a metadata TLVs, which can do the security, which can pass the username for all the functions, can do anything. It's really, really flexible and really, really open. In the, the network programming guy, a network programming draft, there are many functions defined. I will not cover them here. You can, you can do the reference there. But most of them here are really related to networking itself. So there is no, there is no <coughs> video streaming. There is no, uh, there is no the, the, the storage. But there are really the functions which we need to, uh, well, I might say, even replace current networking, networking functions whatever is happening there. So there is decapsulating the packet with a cross connect. There is a cross connect. There are many, many of them. And so I will describe just two main ones here, which are really neat for, for the networking. And maybe I should, should cover X, DX function as well. So this is end function. End function is the really basic one. Meaning is this is end of the segment. This is end of the segment. So there is a there is a locator, and here the locator is b colon colon slash 64, for example, and the function, okay, there is a mistake, function is 1 colon colon 1, 64-bit boundaries. And end function is exactly what I have described. So if I will receive the packet on my end function, I will do just three things. I will decrement segment left. This is easy. I will take a new active uh, new active uh, sit to the destination address, and I will forwarding according to my routing table towards the towards the destination. Oh. As easy as that. It's a, it's, a, it's a really simple thing. I will do the forwarding based on my routing table, and the packet will eventually get to the C, to the ultimate destination, where the next function probably is. It's some different function. And again, that can be video yes. suddenly. That can be that can be anything. In, this is 100% equivalent from the MPLS, what we call node sit. It's exactly the same thing. Node sit is actually attracting all the traffic to myself, and I will really do just plain forwarding based on the next segment. Okay. Second very simple function is end x. x is a little misleading because it's cross connect, and cross connect is sometimes terminolog terminologically linked to the layer 2 VPN. This doesn't have anything to do with any layer 2 VPN. Cross connect means send it to the particle interface. Find the interface and that function is assigned to the interface. So I will do the same thing. So I will receive the packet on C colon colon C1 and because I know it's my function, this is end function, so I will do end function, so decrementing, decrementing segment left. Copy next next segment into the destination address, so D colon colon, but I'm not gonna do any FIP lookup. Because I receive, I haven't received the packet on the end, uh, end, uh, end function, I received the packet on the end X function, which is linked to the particle interface. <coughs> so I will, no matter what my routing table says, I will send the packet to this particle interface. And this is 100% this is equivalent of the adjacent CSIT and MPLS, okay? And as I said, there are many functions defined. The, 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 there is a bunch of the functions which are end D, which means 
decapsulation. So you, it will decapsulate, decapsulate the packet, whatever is inside the, the SRV6 packet. It will decapsulate it and send it to the particle interface if there is DX. And, or do the table lookup, like in VRF, VRF table, if it's DT. <coughs> and there are always like three forms defined, D, DX2, DX4, and DX6. So DX4, if the encapsulated packet is uh, IPv4, DX6, if the encapsulated packet is IPv6, and DX2, if the encapsulated packet is just, just layer two. <coughs> Okay, we covered that. So uh, uh, here the example is again with ISIS. Uh, ISIS, why is that? Well, OSPF will be equivalent. Uh, right now, our, implementa our first implementation is for ISIS. Uh, reason is very simple. ISIS is multi-protocol. OSPF v2 is still just IPv4, and OSPF v3 is just another protocol. So we see in between service providers, quite often shift from OSPF towards the ISIS. And the reason is mainly IPv6. Because if they wanna support IPv6 in their core, they need to pick either OSPF v3 or the ISIS. Once they have just, just OSPF v2, well, they have to make that shift or that decision. So very often they are moving to, towards the ISIS to end up with a single protocol which supports both address, address families. So if we are talking about the routers and the IGP has to do a couple, couple of things. So first of all, it has to advertise the locator. So you define the locator and the router needs to advertise the locator for the segment routing network. And then he needs to advertise his end function. Okay, this is my, this is my end function and this is part of ISIS. And there are advertisement of end X function for all the interfaces which are part of the IGP protocol. And just, just note here, this is IP address on that interface, and it's totally unrelated to function which is linked to that interface. So it doesn't belong to that interface. You can do the SSH to A colon colon one, because this is Lubeck address. Mm. You cannot do SSH or Telnet or anything to B colon colon one, because B is the end function. So whatever comes to B, he will do just the end function. It's not gonna pass it to the, to, the, to the stack, no matter what is, what is inside. And if, it's, if there is no, nothing relevant, it just drops the packet. Same, same here, and X is the function, it's not an IP address. It's the function which router is supposed to do and act according to that function. Okay, second thing, I will show layer three, layer three VPN. How layer three VPN works. So you wanna get rid of MPLS, so there's not gonna be any MPLS in my network, so I, but I wanna do all the services, what I'm, what I'm doing right, right now. I wanna do layer three VPN, I wanna do eVPN, I wanna do BGP internet route if I'm doing BGP free core. <coughs> so everything has to be preserved, but I'm just wanna get rid of the MPLS. It has a couple of advantages. So I don't need the host routes. So what I'm gonna do, I will start IGP protocol in my, in my domain. So my domain, <coughs> is running ISIS or OSPF, and all the routers in this domain, they are advertising their locator. So, router A1 is advertising locator A1 colon colon slash 64. Router A2 will advertise locator A2 colon colon 64, as simple as that. So everyone in IGP domain has that knowledge, and everyone can forward the packet towards, towards the A2 or towards the, towards the A1. Then I'm connecting CE, CE routers. CE routers, well, in this example, this is IPv4, but it can be anything else. It can be IPv6, just same way as I'm, as I'm doing it right now. So those CE routers, they have the PEC protocol. In most cases, it's BGP. It's BGP address family, address family one, so sub address family one as well, because it's IPv4, and this is just a, just a, just a native. And the CE is advertising particular prefix. <coughs> whatever, set of prefixes, anything. So in the MPLS world, the, the PE took the prefix, put it into the VPN, VPN v4 family, and send it out. Well, once he's putting that into the VPN v4 address family, he needs to allocate label for that, either per CE or per prefix or per VRF. So he needed to allocate the label. Well, right now we are not having any labels, so we need to 
allocate something else. What we're gonna allocate is what we call end dx4 function. End dx4 means decapsulate and cross connect to the particular interface. <coughs> so this router will, any prefix he will get from this CE, because the, this particular setting is per CE seat allocation, he will allocate end dx. And he needs to send it, send it out. And he needs to send it out towards the route reflector to get, get it to all the other PEs. And he needs to use, because we are still in layer 3 VPN address, <coughs> he needs to send, needs to use the same address family. Like it's layer 3 VPN, nothing else. So there is a still same address family IP1, uh, IPv4. The sub address family is 128, which is layer 3 VPN. Prefix is there. Next hop is still Lubeck. It's important, it's still Lubeck. I'm, I'm sending my next hop. I'm, I'm, this is source of my BGP, so this is my next hop. There is no label, but the, the label is in this, address, in this address family is mandatory. So by default, we will put their implicit null. <coughs> and we are adding new TLV, which is end dx4. So I'm gonna advertise end dx4 function together <coughs> with all the prefixes I'm receiving from this particle CE. And this router will get that information. So he knows the prefix 4000 is behind and dx4 function uh, a2 colon colon c4. Okay, so he received that prefix through BGP, so he needs to advertise it to the other, other CE. So he will just use the, the, the original IP, IPv4, and he will just advertise that prefix without any additional information. So this CE, this CE is this still same CE. Well, as they are not aware of MPLS right now, they are not gonna be aware of uh, anything anything related to SRV6. They are just CE, just doing plain routing. Then data plane is really simple. So CE router will send the packet which is destined to the, the, the range of that particle prefix and he will send it towards the, his next hop. The next hop is PE. And PE knows that <coughs> prefix is behind the, the function and DX4, A2 colon colon C4. So what he's gonna do, he will take the original packet and he will encapsulate it into the IPv6. So there is no SRH. I'm not doing any traffic engineering right now. So I will do just the encapsulation of the packet. And again, it can be IPv4, it can be IPv6 or the layer two. He will encapsulate it and the destination address of the packet is the function which belongs to this prefix. All the routers inside IGP domain, they know, because, <coughs> because of uh, IGP, they know how to reach A2 colon, colon slash 64. So they will deliver packet towards the router two easily. And router two just receives the packet on that particle function, A2 colon colon C4. So, and he knows this is end DX4 function, so I need to decapsulate and cross connect. I will decapsulate and cross-connect, send it to the particle interface towards the, towards the CE. And that's it. So right now, I'm running SRV6. I'm not having any MPLS. I don't need any host routing in MPLS. I, I always need host route to resolve them to the labels. So it's, it's kind of the issue with the scale. Right now, I can do the summary. And if there is a multiple IGP, IGP domains, I can like advertise to the next domain just a colon colon slash eight bits or something something like that. Really can do all the summary. I don't need to do, use BGPLU. I don't need to use any any complexity complexity there. Suddenly in my all core it's just IPv6 routing. I will deliver anything anything end to end. So just <clears throat> to tie all this together into you know something that an ISP would deploy if I you know want to deliver a service like a traditional VPN v4 service to an enterprise. And taking what you've just shown in the way you're doing the, the function, the DX4, and that encapsulation and decapsulation, and I then tie that to uh, the flex algo for, mm -hmm. to meet my SLAs, Absolutely. you know, like that all wraps up together to say, if I go sell an enterprise, an SLA that says I need to meet these requirements in my SLA, exactly. I put that on a native IPv6 core exactly. and deliver those services staying within the SLA, and it's all done via policy, and I'm not having to manually manage Absolutely. that SLA. Absolutely. You can, well... 
as a source, source routing here, obviously, this is the most simplified example. In case of the flex algo, it will be like exactly like this. Right. If it's just the shortest path, it's going to be exactly like that. But obviously, here, you can add SRH. You can add a couple more functions. You might not need to send the packet directly from one to two. You might need to send it through other functions in the network. And that function can be security. I'm selling to my customer. I'm selling the security. So I will make sure. Uh, I will insert always to all the packets one more seat, and the packet will go first through the security appliance, and then I will get it get it delivered delivered to packet. And well, no one here in the network is aware of that. It's total source routing. Only this guy will do his his work. So he will put all the functions into the packet and send the packet accordingly. And it will go through all the all the things in the network. Gives us a new way to do service chaining. Absolutely. To be able to and bypass. This is, and this is what I want to show. Service chaining with SRV6. I think it's really attractive com uh, thing right now. Right now, the service chaining is a horrible nightmare. Most of the service providers, they are doing service chaining with the setting the VLANs, setting the routing, and any change in the service chain is horrible. It's nightmare to troubleshoot, it's really inflexible, it's really, really nightmare. That the first step was supposed to change that was NSH. Okay, NSH is good, but this is really the thing which will solve, solve the issue. I will show you, show you how. This is my network, and there are and this is going to be live demonstration. So this is this is live. There are, there are a couple couple more things. I hope it's going to work because the, the bandwidth here is really slow. But this is this is what I want to show. This is service provider network, and <clears throat> right now this is really linked linked to the mobile mobile use case. So my E node B is already aware of the particle subscriber, particle user, and it can insert list of the seats based on what I want to do with that particular user. And <clears throat> same with user plane, which is, which is just a packet core. It can set, really, set of the seats and get the packet to go through whatever functions I want. And <clears throat> here, through all the demonstrations, I won't touch any routers here. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be just using NSO to program the list of the seats on the, this particle genome B to get packet pass through the different function in, in a network. And those functions, you can really imagine anything you like behind those, those functions. On the left hand side, <coughs> there is an NSO front end. NSO is our network service orchestrator. It's just provision the, the things into the network. And this is just the front end, just show the graphically what I'm doing. But the, the, it's actually using Norbound API towards the NSO and the programming only those two points, all along the way, just those two points. It's not touching anything else in the network. It's not touching anything else in a data center. On the right-hand side, <coughs> I have the, 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 the traffic <coughs> generator, which is connected, connected here. And it, it measures the latency of the several streams. You can see here, I'm already having some traffic engineering to have the low latency traffic on the bottom part, but we are not going to cover that. It's just another traffic engineering. This is obviously the shortest path through the network, and that, that's where the green and, and the red, red traffic is going through. So green and red traffic goes exactly this way. And you can see there is a certain latency, just to show, okay, there is worse latency. But right now, I want to do service chaining. This is particle traffic for the customer, and because all I'm selling certain bandwidths, I want to uh, make sure it goes through certain QoS. So I will just try to take the QoS, put it into the chain. OK, that's, that's good enough. Well, this is, I just put the QoS into the chain. Well, I didn't apply that yet. Probably want to do more things. And here, I will do DPI, because I want to make sure, I want to know what this customer is sending, what is going, going through, through the network. I will put the DPI, DPI into the chain. And right now, I will just apply, apply the chain. So applying really means oh, my only touch, touch point is this guy is this, this particular uh, appliance. And right now, okay, I'm sending the packets through the QoS, and QoS is a shaper. So I'm shaping, shaping 
shaping the, the stream, which obviously increases the latency of both streams. So I'm increasing the latency. And you can see on the top, I'm dropping some part of the bucket because it's, it's basically constant bitrate. So I'm shaping, increasing the latency, and dropping, dropping something. And just let's take a look what is inside that bucket. Oh, you see, this is, this is my shaper, you cannot see it very well, but this is my DPI. My DPI is checking what kind of traffic is there. So, and you can see there are basically two ports. One port is 1025 and second port is 445. 445 port is very often used for, for the attack. So, okay, I will propose something to my customer and I will send it through the firewall. Okay, so let's come here and just put the firewall in the chain. Firewall is there. I will apply the chain. Again, I just push the sit list to the very end of the router. It's very easy to automate. You are not doing anything in your network. You are not changing, changing anything. You are just pushing the, the, that information to the very end of the network. And you see, the firewall is dropping the, the, the malicious traffic. Well, right now, I'm kind of a little <coughs> bit unfair to my customer because I'm doing the, the, the QoS and then firewall. So I will drop something inside the QoS and then I will drop something <coughs> more inside the firewall. So it would be a little bit more fair to do it other way around. So, okay, let's, let's try to do it other way around. So I will start with the firewall and then I will do QoS. And then I want to make sure I'm really dropping the unwanted traffic. Just put the order like this. And push that information to this guy. So, and this guy, okay. You see what happened? Right now, I'm discarding the, the, the malicious traffic before, before <laughs> firewall. So suddenly, I'm not getting through the shaper here and I'm back on the previous lat latency, and I'm dropping just the bad traffic, which is the green one. And I want to verify that, so I will take a look into the DPI, <coughs> and here you can see port 445 is gone. I'm checking that. So that's it, that's it, that's SRV6. It's for me, it's, it's really beautiful things to do, not just, for a service, not just for the service chaining, for everything. It can really solve all the networking problems I know. It can really do the traffic engineering. It can do layer 3 VPN. It can do layer 2 VPN. Uh, it can do basically anything, and it's just a matter of deploying that. And once I will deploy that, it's, my network will become really, really, really simple. And this is a really important part for, for SRE6. So a question there, is there, is there a function disparity between uh, segment routing on v4 and v6? It seems like there are some different capabilities in each and that you're looking towards SRV6 to be the real foundation of your routing architecture for a service provider in the future. Definitely we are looking for SRV6 for the future. Mm -hmm. Right now, as I said, it's not that simple to do everything right now in the current hardware. But mm -hmm. all the future hardware is planned and we have a lot of discussions how to incorporate SRV6 in there. Uh, there is no disparity. Both are supposed to do basically same functions, okay. same, same things. But obviously, with the SRV6, you have way more flexibility. Mm -hmm. Because you, you don't have like 20 bits per label. You right. suddenly have 128 bits. So you can easily, ink, well, those 20 bits are meant to be just for forwarding. 128 bits, suddenly you can do anything. You can really encode the function. You can do it in the software. The, the, you see, I didn't mention that, that the, some of those applications here, like the firewall and the IPS, they are already SRV6 ever. So they have SRV6 function in there. So there is a SRV6 function, which is advertised by firewall, and he's doing this firewalling function. Gotcha. So it's going beyond the SRMPLS. I could see this as a really interesting use case for <clears throat> ISPs that provide like DDoS protection, where Absolutely. they want to be able to steer the traffic back to a traffic cleaning. Absolutely, step. and we do that. We do that. We do that steering uh, even now with SRM PLS. So, have you guys had conversations with service providers? Some of the service providers that run V6 cores today, mm -hmm. um, natively. I mean, have you have you uh, had conversations okay, right. with anybody? Is this Basically, we have the we state have, of this. I think we have, uh, well, 
for particular for SRV6, the first release, the uh, first official release is 661, which was released just in December. And we have many service providers who are planning to deploy SRV6 or discussing SRV6. Okay. And there is a one particular customer who will deploy, who starts deploying that already this year.